All right. Welcome to the Highlander Rewatch Podcast, where each and every week we talk about another facet of the Highlander universe. I'm one of your rewatchers. I'm Keith. This is Kyle. This is Eamon. And welcome. Return to form right there. Classic. That's right. Classic. All right. And welcome to episode 10 of our Endgame coverage. We're now an exclusively Endgame podcast, and that's all we're going to ever talk about. That's right. 10 episodes so far. Uh, How you guys doing? Good. Happy to talk about Endgame. Sure. I'm sure there's lots we haven't said already. Isn't that true? So what? No, actually, we're we are actually going to be predominantly hearing about what other people have to say. I I dare say this go round, right? That's right. So uh, this episode, so we've already gotten to the end of the film. Uh, in this episode, we're going to be talking about a lot of uh, reviews at the time. We're going to talk about the budget of Endgame, uh, how it performed at the box office. Uh, we're going to talk about some uh, maybe hot takes, some second opinions that we might agree not agree with. Uh, it's going to be something, and we're going to play a little game at the end, too. It's going to be great. And also, uh, I'm going to dip back into the uh, the movie a bit, because I think there's some some uh, some dangling threads that I'd like to talk about. But Some things somehow left unsaid. Somehow. Sure. I, I imagine in a year and a half, there'll be some weird bonus episode uh, that's about, like, <laughs> you know what? Like, I got more to say about Endgame, but... Mm. Mm. Some, uh, some, some... Dangling huckleberries. Huckleberries. What are those things called? Goose. Reds. Dingleberries. Dingleberries. A dingleberry. <laughs> Eamon, yes. what's a dingleberry? Uh, I'd rather not go into that. No. That's no. a that's a rare first. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, really. Okay. Fair enough. Well. Well, all fruit is great. Um. Love fruit. <laughs> we love fruit. Dingleberries matter. That's um, right. Okay, so. Uh, why don't we start off with a little bit of a game, okay? Uh, so we're going to be talking about the Highlander budget. Uh, Ooh. I know, right? Uh, so let me bring this up here. The Highlander budget. The Highlander budget. All right, so Kyle and Amy, you're going to go head-to-head, and you are going to try to guess, uh, much like our catalog game, like what was the budget of Highlander Endgame? Uh, and like we normally do, uh, 20% uh, or closer to the actual price. And I don't know what you win this uh, episode because there's nowhere to give your opinion first. Uh, so I guess you just get respect. So it's good. It. Good, good, good. Uh, Eamon, how much do you think Highlander Endgame to- costs to produce? This is filmed in 1999, released in the year 2000. Ugh. I'm really <laughs> bad at these kinds of things. Uh, I'll say $15 million. $15 million. It should be noted for the record that, Eamon, you're also bad at the catalog game. So Yes. This yes, is, it's important this to is, know. This is fine. I'm bad at all games. All the games. I'm just yeah. teasing. Kyle, how much do you think Highlander Endgame costs? Uh, this feels like a movie you can't, like, I don't know that you can make a movie on this scope for less than, like, $30 million bucks. So I'm going to guess that. Sorry, 30 million dollars 30 million how many wow so if, that, if, if that's hard to realize how much money that is imagine like a dollar times 30 million and that'll yeah, be okay. some so sense. imagine 30 million by multiplying something by 30 million yeah right it's a lot okay actual retail actual retail price of Highlander endgame which i guess is true uh is 25 million dollars Wow. So Kyle, you win. Congratulations. Yeah, it's pretty close on that one. You were. You did a great job. Thank you. Congratulations, sir. I, I feel like the action movies, like you always think they're gonna be cheaper, but any kind of action movie, I just don't I just don't see how that happens. Like I feel like you can make like a two lo- like a two or three location drama for five million bucks. But... Totally. Yeah, once you start blowing something up, you yeah. gotta up the price tag, right? I hate that poster so much. Uh, yep, it's not good. Why right? ever would you have issue with this poster? I'd did like you, to know how much the did poster you edit cost. edit this at all, Keith? That poster? No, that is yeah. like, isn't that great? Like, his, uh, Why Connor is McLeod's his sword head... behind the the other sword. Mm, do you see I that? I do. <laughs> like, yeah. you know what? Random other thought that didn't come up before. That is not Connor's haircut in the movie. And no. I'm gonna go ahead and say I would enjoy this movie three percent more if that was his hair. <laughs> Because he if he looks, didn't have that weird Prince Valiant haircut or whatever it was. Right? Yeah, yeah. he looks like a Victorian school child for half the movie. <laughs> yeah, this is like the lasso tool uh, gone amok in Photoshop with like Lambert's head. It like it just looks like copied and pasted right on there. Yeah. It's yep. crazy. Very good. 
Very good indeed. Yeah, and, and 20, of course, he's 25 not- million worth. <laughs> Yikes. Um, okay, so let's compare. I thought it'd be fun to compare the budget of Endgame to the budget of the other Highlander properties. Uh, yeah, right? So let's talk about Highlander. Do you guys remember how much Highlander cost? No. We'll turn the whole thing into a game. You guys can just shout it out. This is very, isn't very official. We can move along. Uh, uh, say it. 20 million. 20 million. Great. Moving on. So it was $16 million. But of course, that was wow. filmed in 1985. So I went through and I did, uh, I adjusted all the, the budgets of the movie movies. Uh, so the thing that's crazy is in 99, 1999, the film Highlander would have cost $24.75 million. Built slightly less. Right. Which isn't this crazy. Like it practically has the same budget. That's as nuts. Highlander Endgame. And so, like, I don't know, it, it makes my brain, like, freak out. Like, wait, like, where does all that money go? Like, I suppose Christopher Lambert must cost a lot more for Highlander Endgame than he does... Yeah, but you're not paying Connery. You're not paying Connery a million dollars for a few days of work. Uh, yeah, I, I can't... I don't really know um, what the I deal mean, they is. they shot in fucking cheap-ass Romania. That's the other thing is like, I actually thought about going another layer to this and being like, okay, so we're going to adjust for inflation, but we also need to adjust for each country that these films are done in because like 25 million in like Romania gets you somewhere different. Uh, Same thing with Argentina for Highlander 2. So I don't know, man. This is crazy. Wild. Yep. Yeah, they actually filmed in Scotland, New York, and London for the original one uh london and new york are expensive places to film so i i don't know what's happening um all right let's talk about highlander 2 how much do you think this bad bug cost uh i bet this one cost 30 million oh 34 million they really dumped some money into this uh i mean of course highlander 1 was like a cold hit overseas i shouldn't even say a cold hit overseas it did well overseas uh random question does a helicopter ever appear in the movie highlander uh, I think so. When they break into the dam, I think there's a helicopter. Okay. Mm. Wondering about mm. that chopper. That's right. That iconic kind of Ex- chopper. Exciting helicopter. <laughs> <laughs> yep. All right. Moving on. So if Highlander 2 was filmed in 1999, its adjusted budget would be $43 <laughs> million. Oh, uh, wow. Yeah. That magic. Expensive. Expensive indeed. The Highlander fairy three. tale ending. <laughs> Who's got a guess? Uh, 35. Oh, 32, 35. Oh, it's going up. All right. Um, also, I'd like to take uh, this opportunity to mention, I should have mentioned this at the top of the show, uh, that this is a video episode, of course, if people are still you know, listening to these as podcasts, super cool, but there's a lot of visual stuff now. Uh, so you can watch it on our Facebook page or subscribe to our YouTube channel, which like we've had for a long time, but like now we're regularly updating it with uh, these brand new videos. So uh, check that out and subscribe. Highlander 3 was $26 million. Oh, that's down. Okay. oh that's, that's right. Good. And it came out in 94, filmed in 93. Um, okay, so in 99, Highlander 3 would cost $30 million. So still a higher budget than Endgame. Uh, now we get into some other stuff. So let's compare all the Highlander budgets. <laughs> Here mm. we go. Ba-boom. So you can really wow. see. Oh. Like, this is an impressive infographic you have made. Thank you. This is like we're looking at the shield generator presentation. <laughs> right, exactly. Uh, so here you can see there, uh, the budgets are in dark blue and in 1999 is the adjusted budget if everything was equal in 1999. Of course, this isn't adjusted for the uh, locations it's filmed in, which is crazy. Uh, yeah, isn't this weird to see? I don't know. Uh, any thoughts initially on this? We have another chart too. Highlander 2. It's insane to me that effectively the cheapest movie to make was the first movie, which is by far the best looking movie. Yeah. Like not even just in terms of quality, just in terms of uh, like overall quality, just in terms of what the movie itself looks like, which is ordinarily something you're buying with your budget. Yeah, absolutely. And it's, it's not close. Nope. I would say Highlander 2 has a chance of looking pretty cool, except like the special effects, like all the weird dome effects and stuff like that, like really drag it down uh, up until when you get like that, like the renegade or whatever the, the producer's cut is that like they redid the effects. That looks better. Uh, yeah. 
but there's Crazy. also good shots in that. The film quality's high. Right. Uh, so we did a little Highlander PL. I thought this would be fun. Oh, good. Uh, <laughs> Does this account just for the box office or worldwide other sales? Uh, this is worldwide gross. Worldwide gross. Worldwide gross. Oh, uh, so boy. our budgets are in <laughs> in purple and the gross is in pink. Uh, to, to me, a thing that seems really interesting about this is that the gross is almost equal across the board. Isn't that weird? Like the budgets have changed drastically. Uh, to me, this seems to be like, hey, there's some core audience that likes Highlander and no one else does. <laughs> like no one else is seeing these movies. But also some of these movies are like wildly different than each other. So I don't know. So does this mean that <laughs> all of these movies were flops. <laughs> in yes. The theater. Well, I think kind of box office flops. I think a lot yeah. of them would have ended up making money. Mm -hmm. When you yeah, that's for sure. Like it's not like Highlander did not make money to some degree, and it's also curious to to wonder like who made the money. Like when the movie loses money, uh, you know, other people could pick up the slack with like a little merch right on the side. Uh, yeah, but I don't know that like canon. Like I don't know who is the, who it is that captures that. Like, exactly right. So that that's kind of interesting to think or about. Canon films or hmm. right. And so finally, uh, we can get a look and see uh, <laughs> what this all looked like in terms of the percent budget loss. Uh, so Highlander lost nineteen percent of its budget. <laughs> Highlander two lost nearly sixty percent. Oof. I know. Highlander three is forty seven. And finally, Highlander Endgame is forty nine percent of its budget lost. So this Dang. is like this is like a gloomy tale, guys. Of Bananas. Like the history of like Highlander, right? And then we have one more film. Right. Granted, it was a made for TV movie. <laughs> so good, it couldn't be released in theaters. Mm -hmm. That's right. Uh, so there we go. That's that. That's zany. Wow. I love it. It is zany. Thank you for the maths. You're welcome. All these little graphics, Man. very fun. Okay, so uh, before we hop back in, well, I should say before we get into like all these second opinions and reviews, I did kind of want to jump into the the movie a little bit more because I was actually listening to our episode from last week, uh, and I said to myself, I was like, you know, I don't know how much we really talked about like the last bits of dialogue because I think I screamed fuck really loud and was just upset. <laughs> Which last bits of dialogue in which cut? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I uh, was thinking about the uh, at the Millennium Dome in London where Duncan and Faith slash Kate have like a convo. And uh, so for just like two seconds, I kind of just wanted to go over this dialogue. Uh, Eamon, do you want to like recreate this with me? We could do a little reading. Sure. Ooh. I'll be Faith because you do okay. a good Duncan. Okay. Okay. So th these are... The, the actual this is the actual dialogue at the end of the movie this is how the movie ends so i'll be faith so why are you here you hoping you'd find me for whatever reason kel made his choice so um what now trust you can always trust me faith <laughs> are you doing the adr yeah faith is dead i thought we'd give kate another chance and then Duncan tries to hand me this fucking talisman. And I'm like, not yet. Till the day we are reborn, you hold on to it for me. We've got plenty of time. And then blah, 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 blah we kiss. What is up? What is up with this, guys? Like, for real. What? I like that in the script, they change Faith's name to Kate. Right? <laughs> Faith is dead. Right? That's crazy. So, like, there's a lot to talk. I mean, I don't say there's a lot to talk about, but maybe there is. Uh, there isn't. Shut up. <laughs> I like what did we ever talk about? Like, Kel made his choice. This is crazy to me. Like, we what just, is we what did like, he make his choice? What does that what does that line mean? We, he made his choice not to kill her, clearly. Well, he could have made his choice to kill her. So I don't understand. Like, like what is that about? Bad. Like, well, what do I gain? What do I ga mm -hmm. gain from that? That that Kate has no agency? Oh, yeah, I remember now. Like what? Oh yeah, that she's alive just because Kel wished it so. I guess, yeah, it's just so weird. And like, I don't know, like this is a movie that starts with Duncan's, the first line of this movie is, 
oh, what do you want on your hot dog? And like one of the last lines of this movie is, oh, now what? It's like, that's what you're at. Like, that's the the question for the audience, right? Like, what yeah. what now? After, after all of this nonsense, like, where does any of this go? And it's just like, it's all garbage. Anyway, uh, like, I don't understand. Why does Kate give him the pendant back? Like, what is this saying? Did we ever really discuss like, what what is happening right now? Are they getting back together? Yes. But Was she doesn't want the- not indicative of that? But, but like, but in what capacity? She's like, I want to like fucking hook up with you because like the sex was bananas. It's crazy, right? Everyone saw it, right? It must have been wild. And now she's like, all right, we can hook up more, but like you take your little jewelry back. I don't want a gift, right? Like, I don't understand what this is about. Why can't she take the little pendant back? I don't think that so. she can't. She wants, she's like, I think she's signaling that they're going to be together for a while. So like you hang on to it for me. But they're gonna be together. What's he got in his pocket? I don't understand this at all. Maybe I'm completely insane. Kyle's you're, reaction. You're way overthinking this. I don't. I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't like it either. <laughs> <laughs> it's bad. Oh yeah. I, I mean, I think that's the that's the problem. Okay. They they just like shoved that in at the end. They were like, it's, I don't know. <laughs> it's so just. I just. Uh, it's just so upsetting. Uh, Eamon, you used the word insulting last time, I think, to mm-hmm. describe some of these things. And I don't know. I was looking at that again and just being insulted by like what the film was giving me. Um, but I did also want to mention one other thing. Last episode, we did talk about the Bechtel test. And we were like, mm-hmm. oh, we got like Kate and uh, what's her name? Who's the other person in this? Uh, Heather? Rachel? Rachel? Okay. Well, see, this is the thing. I don't think we mentioned all. There's four women in this movie. Rachel, Heather, Faith, Kate, and is there someone else? Why am I thinking there's a fourth? Probably is, and we're just so. being idiots. Oh, or... Connor's mother. mother. Yeah. Oh, right. Connor's mother. I do want to mention, because we did talk about Rachel is fridged at the top of this movie. Mm-hmm. All four female characters in this film are murdered on screen. Like, that's crazy. Like, so I do want to yep. mention that. Like, what is up? Like, what? All four, wow. All four Wait. murdered one, on screen. Well, Heather's gets, not murdered on screen. Oh, that's right. That's She's not true. murdured on screen. I'm sorry. <clears throat> so only three. three only three are murdered on screen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just it's just so weird. I don't know, man. We yeah. <laughs> one one gets burned at the stake and yep. explodes. Mm-hmm. One is exploded. One is exploded I'm, without being burned at the stake. Yeah. That's right. And, and one, one just gets her head chopped off. Dead. <laughs> one in, all, in an alternative universe gets her head chopped off. That's and another right. One yeah. inexplicably, inexplicably, inexplicably lives. But she gets stabbed by Duncan. Sure does. In all versions. <laughs> so one woman gets killed, murdered twice in this movie. <laughs> right. Depending That's on the right. depending on the cut you watch. <sighs> all right. Well, I think it's time to read some uh, some reviews at the time. Uh, so I've sent Kyle and Eamon some uh, some reviews uh, that were done. Uh, when, do you, when do you guys want to kick us off? Sure. Uh, I can read this Entertainment Weekly review. Oh, I love it. So who wrote this? When did it come out? What's the skinny? Oh, do we want to talk about the Rotten Tomatoes score? First? Hell yeah. So it got an 11% from critics. 11 Mm-hmm. Okay, and and what's the audience give it, Damon? Thirty-eight, thirty <laughs> percent. So this is like not performing well in either category, but like really, critics do not like this film. Yeah, uh, by any metric. So this is from the publication Entertainment Weekly, written September fifteenth, two thousand, by Lisa Schwarzbaum. Those in the cult will be thrilled that <laughs> Highlander Endgame. Connor McC- that in Highlander Endgame, Connor McCloud, Christopher Lambert, weather-beaten star of the movie franchise dating back to 1986. Weather-beaten. Yeah, <laughs> that's good. And his fellow clansman, Duncan McCloud, Adrian Paul, beetle-browed star of the syndicated TV franchise dating back to 1993, engage in a vein-popping showdown to see which immortal will bump off the other, thereby achieving a quickening of multi-orgasmic proportions. Not what the movie's about. <laughs> those who aren't in the cult of this popular genre fantasy not only won't understand what the previous sentence is about, but may also wonder what's so great about perpetual life if it entails schlepping from one badly lit, cheesily art-directed, peat bog-colored century to another, <laughs> spouting hollow dialogue like, 
honor is not in the weapon, it's in the man. <laughs> this latest chapter in the saga of the Scottish superheroes, their claim banner might read ageless since 1518, and their ongoing time-shifting, sword-clanging, martial arts-oriented battles finds the two brethren up against the evil Jacob Kell, Bruce Payne, a renegade immortal. Kell's mo most potent weapon, it turns out, isn't his cutlery, it's the hysterical, hot villain inflections and with which Payne declaims very, very long speeches <laughs> about how difficult it is to stick around, but with the endless, numbing sameness of it all. Isn't that the everlasting truth? D plus. <laughs> oh, boy. Wow. All right, so what do we think of that review? Do we agree with uh, points in it? Do we disagree with anything they said? Um, I, I mean, mean they're, they're pretty spot on. <laughs> I mean, they also like clearly don't get it though. Totally, yeah. right? That I think that is a problem. With, I think that's part of that is a problem with this movie, but it's also a problem with the way critics are going to interact with it. Mm -hmm. Like this movie doesn't do a great job of setting the table for people who don't know a lot. Right. But also this person's like very clearly disdainful of the source material. In some sure. Way, right. Like this person doesn't really care to get it. So like, you know, in some ways, I, I feel weird sticking up for this movie that we've spent like nine episodes slagging. But, you know, there are some of some aspect of that is unfair to me. Agreed. Totally. Yeah. And I think like it's interesting to as we read these like that notion that, uh, you know, who is this movie for and people that aren't familiar with Highlander? Like, how are they going to what's their take going to be? Because we wondered if we were too close to it and we're being unjustly hard on it because of that uh so anyway shall we read the next one kyle you want to read the next one it's a short one sure. this is just a little blurb from the, the new york, york post, post. <laughs> in 2000 its story is so incompetently constructed that long lulls between nonsensical action scenes make you wonder if it was written by a prepubescent fan <laughs> holy Damn. smokes yikes from the Compliments of the New York Post. Yep. Part of that I agree with. I mean, I don't know. I remember scenes in this, and I was like, this reads like fan fiction, man. This is like not so. Fan fiction, baby. Very <laughs> fan fiction y. It is. All right. I'm going to read the next one. This is from the San Francisco Chronicle. Uh, this is by Edward Guffman. And this review came out on September 2nd in the year 2000s. The article is titled, Off With Their Heads, Highlander Hits a Low. <laughs> Yikes. Aww. Highlander Endgame tends to leapfrog the epochs with glib dispatch. 16th century Scotland plays a big role with the final showdown taking place in 2000. One of the benefits of time travel, well, it's more like a distraction, is seeing the wigs, costumes, and facial hair pieces that get pasted on Paul. An adequate actor with romantic Douglas Fairbanks looks. Paul is the saving grace here, and he has a hot sex scene with full-lipped Elisa B, playing the woman he makes immortal so he won't be alone. You I, I, agree with, I, I strongly agree with the premise that Adrian Paul is like a, a bright spot in this film. Yes. I think he does very well in this movie. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I don't know if he had like hopes that this might be his transition to the big screen in some way, but he certainly put in the effort as though it was. Yeah, definitely. He is the bright spot. Uh, Edward continues, you force this on me. She accuses him century later. The numbing, uh, <laughs> oh, uh-oh, Kyle's dog is going crazy. The numbing sameness of it all, but don't expect philosophical ruminations on immortality. Samuel Beckett, this ain't. Directed by first time movie maker, Doug uh, Aronox, I can never say his name right. Our Air Nias. Air Nias. Thanks, oh, I have no idea. Uh, Highlander Endgame is a video game come to life, structured mostly from action scenes that achieve the numbing sameness uh, that Lisa B. <laughs> laments. This formula is simple. Swordplay, martial arts, anthem rock music, and the occasional throwaway lines on the order of hasta la vista. Even the sound effects get tiring. How many times can you hear a sword being clanged, yanked from the earth, or sink squishingly into quivering flesh without getting bored? <laughs> Wow. Yikes. That is not something I picked up on is the, the sword clanking. Oh, I hated it. It's it's the sound effects in the TV show have like better quality than I think mm -hmm. the sound effects in the film do. It's weird. Uh, like just like the, the, the it's just like seems tinny and like it doesn't have like the grandeur that like I don't know even Highlander one has. Uh, but yeah, 
It's very I, strange. I, the blood sound effects in this are very like. <laughs> yeah. What are they like, Eamon? Ew. Okay. Yum. And there's also like a genre of film that like that exists in, right? Like, I mean, a lot of like samurai movies have that sort of like over the top, like squishy sound effects and blood and gore. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. Mm. Mm, no either. But also this person mentions Anthem Rock and that to me makes me think that they're getting this a bit confused with like Highlander 1. That this like is like, because I, I don't hear a lot of Anthem Rock uh, in this movie at all. I hear none. I think it's like all weird techno music. Yeah, like is yeah. there? Like what is that even in reference to? No. So another instance where I think the reviewer is probably like maybe drawing uh, some comparisons to the original. Like it just exists in their head and they might be coming at this movie a little bit negatively too, I think. Maybe. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. All right, Eamon. Yes. This, la this last one we can divide up. It's a little long, uh, but this is the New York Times review. Uh, I can't even believe they reviewed this movie, but I guess they review all the movies. Um, it's pretty nuts. I don't yeah. know if they review all movies. This this might have the stink of like when they reviewed Guy Fieri's restaurant. <laughs> right. right. But like because like they knew what they were doing. Like they were being snooty assholes about it. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm, I'm assuming that's what this is going to be. But we're doing this fresh. I have not read this before. So all right. Failing New York Times by Elvis <laughs> Mitchell, September 2nd, 2000. The rules have been broken. One of your kind has gone renegade. The good guy immortal Duncan McLeod, Adrian Paul of the Clan McLeod, is told in Highlander Endgame. The evil immortal Jacob Kell, Bruce Payne, has gone on a rampage. And such an earth-shaking event hasn't transpired on Earth since, well, the last Highlander movie. When the evil immortal Kane had to be stopped by good guy Connor McLeod, Christopher Lambert of the Clan McLeod. Is that Kel true? Like, is Kel on a rampage? Is that what this is? I guess. I guess. I don't I think know. so. I mean, we were left wondering what the hell is he doing? <laughs> like, Yeah, I, I don't know. All right. Sure, rampage. He's on a rampage. He's on a rampage. I think that's accurate. He blows up a building. He assaults the sanctuary. He uh, does all that other stuff. Sure. Uh, Kel wants to torture Connor for all eternity because Connor killed his father centuries before. Though to be fair, Kel and others burned Connor's mother at the stake. Yep. Although, to you know, be fair. <laughs> yeah. Although Endgame is only 95 minutes long, there's so much exposition that some may find it as confusing as the Samuel Beckett play of the same name. <laughs> Very, uh, <laughs> what a overly... <laughs> literary <laughs> reference yep oh uh, wait from the new york times you mean <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> in the highlander mythology immortals walk the earth they modestly refer to themselves as the seeds of legend each time one is killed in battle his head has to be cut off leading to a light show that could be right out of an <laughs> ozzy osbourne concert his spirit and power entered the victor i'm sure there's a lengthy monograph on the homoeroticism of Highlander Ho somewhere at the Sarbonne and Endgame lets Kel jokingly allude to it. This may be the only thing that will keep those unaware of the Highlander mythology interested. <laughs> <laughs> the New York Times is positing that if uh, if you don't know much about High, it's like if you don't know much about Highlander, you stay for the gay illusions. Is I guess so. Story? Like, oh, huh, what's that... this all about? Come for the sword fights. Stay for the gay. Stay for the sword fights. Yeah. Stay <laughs> right. for the sword All right. Fights. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I'll continue reading and then uh, Kyle will take over in uh, two paragraphs or so. Uh, the mythology began in the 1986 film Highlander, which has the distinction of being one of the most over directed films of that decade. Huh. Interesting. I don't agree with that. Uh, the camera flies around so much, you assume the camera operators were being paid by the mile. <laughs> wow. Uh, Mr. Lambert stare, uh, starred in the sequels which lost whatever uh, sprightliness the first one had, perhaps because the quality was in, uh, embodied by Sean Connery playing Mr. Lambert's mentor and more absurdly, a Spanish, a Spaniard with a Scottish uh, lilt. Uh, the appropriate accents are a big part of Highlander. Connor seems to have been singled out to be an immortal because he uh, has the least convincing Scottish accent in the country. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Connery's gargantuan, jovial presence, uh, he seemed to be in on some private joke, was glimpsed briefly in the second Highlander, where, it where he had a cameo that was such a brazen attempt to bring in an audience 
that he seemed to be uh, cashing his check on the set. Uh, the <laughs> other sequels have become increasingly grim and uh, was this dollarous? Dollarous. Uh, uh, it's no fun having to live forever. That's the theme of Endgame. And to set up this picture, the producers used endless flashbacks because the audience, uh, unfamiliar with Highlander movies and the spin-off television series. Wait, what? What is this sentence? Uh, and to set up this picture, the producers use endless flashbacks because the audience, unfamiliar with the Highlander movies and the spin-off television series in which all the immortals seem to have moved to Canada <laughs> have to be brought up to speed. That's very funny. I, I yeah. think that line's funny. Uh, that all the immortals have moved to Canada. Yep. All right. Uh, Kyle, do you want to read the last two? Yeah. Connor, looking about as miserable as anyone who has lived for several centuries can, has gone into seclusion for 10 years, a revelation that means the movie's sequels apparently never took place since they were set in the, the 1990s. Endgame doesn't even bother to be consistent with its own phony past. He leaves the sanctu sanctuary, called Sanctuary no less, to join Duncan so that together they can keep Kel from being the last surviving immortal. The immortal creed is there could be only one. There is so much exposition that Mr. Paul, whose impish Duncan was the protagonist of the television spinoff, doesn't even appear until 10 minutes into the action. And the action is the best thing in the picture, taking place in warehouses and abandoned buildings that make the film look like, ooh, don't know this one. <laughs> Einsterzende Nobaton? Don't, I don't know. There we go. New York Times reference. Yeah. It's nice to see that mindless violence back in a B picture where it belongs. And the sword play is impressive. When Highlander sticks to the hand-to-hand -hand battles and doesn't try to offer deeper thoughts on the life of an immortal, it works on its own terms. No one explains how the two Britons, Connor and Duncan, learn sword fighting techniques that look Japanese, but it's probably pointless to ask you any questions here. And that is the review. That's it. What do we think of that one? Uh, I don't know. It's like obviously so snooty in its way, but then it like does circle around and is like, but you know, if you take it on its own terms, it's actually okay. I don't yeah. Know. And it's weird. This, this uh, review seems perhaps the most like cognizant of the Highlander universe, like and how it exists. Although within that, I feel like they get some stuff like wrong, like Dunkish, like Adrian Paul's impish Duncan. Would you think Duncan is impish? He's playful at times. But I mean, I think most of the time we're like, Duncan is super stoic in the show. And like, we need Richie there to like pull him out of it. Is he, I don't think he's super stoic in the context of this movie though. No. You deal with him a lot. He's very playful in all the flashbacks, which is also- Oh, that's true. Like young Duncan. And modern Duncan has like very emotional scenes. Like modern Duncan is like, Connor, don't kill yourself. Faith, I love you. <laughs> So that's right so all right that word i tripped over i shit you not is a german experimental music group formed in west berlin in 1980 so thank you new york times for for being utterly inscrutable on this one wow very good <laughs> what a snooty review but you know they give it props at the end hmm. Of the review. They do. Yeah. yeah. It's interesting how like very these these reviews are, uh, I think. Um some truths certainly in there. Uh so but there's some other second opinions. Uh most of these obviously lean towards being like, I'd say negative, right? Um sure. However, uh, and we didn't we weren't crazy about the movie, but we thought we'd uh read some second opinions off a variety of websites. Uh from people who uh, loved this movie. Uh, so I thought this would be fun. Um, so well, on Amazon- to, to give voice there, uh, we've flagged several times that there are people who adore this movie. Yes. Uh, so maybe at least like, you know, acknowledging that and giving them their due is okay. Though I feel-, I, feel I think we're gonna be laughing through some of these, right? What's that? We're gonna laugh through some of these, right? Well, I think so, but. Okay. <laughs> okay, so on Amazon, 67% uh, uh, gave this five stars on Amazon. Only 3% gave this one star. So you can see, uh, I mean, for whatever these like, you know, amalgamated sites are like Rotten Tomatoes, like this is a very different metric than what's given to us on Rotten Tomatoes. Uh, also, I just want to point out how th that's even more stark, I think, than it looks, because I think on most on most product review pages, there's like, it's like bimodal. There's like 
a ton of five stars and like a ton of one stars because like they're the only people who get on there to write anything is right. like you're either super jazzed about it or you fucking hated it that's true um so the fact that the negative is only three percent of this is interesting to me <laughs> yeah right okay so here we go uh let me correct my screen here all right this is uh titled there can be only one and this was reviewed on november 6 2001 Ooh. even though i have in yet the wake to of 9-11 they wrote this <laughs> <laughs> that's right so yeah really get into their mindset here uh <sighs> crush nation um even though I've yet to see Highlander 2 The Quickening and Highlander The Final Dimension, this film is just as good as the original <laughs> film. <laughs> Jacob Kell is on par with the Kurrigan as the one of as the best villains that Connor and Duncan McCloud have ever faced. The visual effects were done very good compared to the series. <laughs> <laughs> no, they weren't. Yeah. The, yeah. Act, the acting and choreography are done very well. If this film had any downfalls, there would be two of them. Colon. Number one, Duncan and Faith's sex scene. <laughs> That's in caps. <laughs> True. It has good edit editing between the scene and the past and the present. And the woman playing Faith is great looking. <laughs> oh boy. But I'd rather watch Kate Winslet's nude scene in Titanic than look at Adrian Paul's naked rear end through half of that scene. And since I'm Christian, I really shouldn't watch this scene much at all. <laughs> I wow. what? Right. This I like the weird contradiction of like, well, first off, I'd rather see those Titanic titties. But right. second, I'm a Christian, so it doesn't matter. Yeah, so, and perhaps a bit of like homophobia thrown in right in the middle of this. Like, yeah. I can't look at Adrian's naked butt. Like, what? Ones. Um, all right, and number two. Thing. <laughs> number two, the death of Connor McLeod. This is the part of the movie that bothered me the most. Connor is my favorite Highlander character and was the one in the original film. It was sad that he died, but it was more sad that Duncan was the one that killed him. Even though it was inevitable, it's still sad to think about. Other than these minor problems, Highlander Endgame is a movie that all Highlander fans shouldn't be without. Grade A+. Plus. <laughs> I, I like that they're describing the most important plot point in the entire movie as a minor issue. They're like, minus this right. minor issue. Yeah. Ooh. He says Connor is his favorite and he has, hasn't has even seen all the Connor movies. <laughs> oh, that's right. Yeah, like that doesn't make any sense. I've seen one film with Connor and that's it. Wow, whatever, man. Woo! Very a weird. plus this movie is not an a plus very weird uh, fans hate me people i'll, hate I'll read me the next so two much because these are or the, the next three of these because they are kind of of a type uh Go crazy and very short yep all of these are five stars uh this reviewer writes is a good one <laughs> <laughs> How to a game, the last one for Chris Lambert with Adrian Paul is a good one. I love this on my Amazon seven inch tablet. <laughs> Which, cool flex. They have a seven inch tablet. Like, wow. isn't that like the size of a phone? That's gonna <laughs> be like, so that's going to look terrible. Uh, <laughs> it's like the David Lynch thing. If you think you've seen a movie on your fucking phone. <laughs> so good. Uh, I'm going to skip one and loop back. Number four, gift for husband. My husband wanted this DVD. Five stars. <laughs> wow. Very good. Uh, My husband this wanted one, this. Which I think DVD. we can all agree to. Five out of five stars. Review name, five stars. Only comment. <laughs> At least Adrian Paul makes it tasty. So they're going, they're going head to head with tasty. that first review who was who is not down for the Adrian Buns. And this person is like, more, more AP Buns, please. Yeah. More AP Buns. <laughs> AP Buns, that sounds like a chain. Let's make it happen. Come, come to AP Buns. All right, I'll read this next one. This is another five out of five review. Amazingly epic. Amazingly cool. This is written on December 12th, 2004. Attention, spoiler included. So if you oh. haven't watched the movie yet, don't listen to this part. One of my favorite movies, no doubt. A well skilled director although some scenes are quite cl clumsily directed what except they write clumpsy yeah all the the uh the the grammar is all left the same like this person could not put a space between any other commas it's insufferable 
Is that like the Nutty Professor sequel? Clumps yeah, the Clumps. Right yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. right. Christopher Lambert at his <laughs> best. At his best. And an epic but also cool plot. The martial arts are great too, and so is the music. No. Unfortunately, <laughs> the movie lacks in the acting part. The main good guys are great, but I found the bad guy and the watch it too <laughs> angry. <laughs> what? I agree. All right, fair enough. But who knows? Maybe it's the director's fault. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, who knows? Maybe he told them to act that way. What do you, sure. what do you think about that? Do you think the director told them how to act? No, I don't. Yeah. Also, <laughs> not like, really. I like not he's like a well skilled director, but some schemes are, are are clumsy, and maybe he made the actors bad. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> crazy. I would also like to correct a wrong essay about this film. <laughs> a wrong essay, which I believe must be corrected if you want to make the right decision to buy this film or not. This is the spoiling part. So everybody, yeah, plug your ears if you haven't seen it. What is said by many about this movie is that the game ends, leaving the character of Adrian Paul. Don't remember his name right now. <laughs> How can he not remember the name Duncan? I, Who this is his, this is his favorite movie. Without knowing the character's name. Anyway, please continue. <laughs> that is completely wrong. The movie gives you no such information. Er, Adrian Paul's character 6,000, what? And more year old friend is still alive. What? <laughs> oh, <this>. Mythos. <laughs> or at least we don't learn anything about him dying. And our, of uh, course, what? There is that new scene in the end where we learn that Faith is still alive. To my opinion, this part is called Endgame because the game ends for the original Highlander played by Chris Lambert, the main character of the movies, when he dies. Anyway, if you like epic, cool, and our course martial arts, buy this movie now. <laughs> no! Wow. What a review. Was, was there a lot of confusion that the game was supposed to be over at the end of this movie? I, we, we had some Facebook comments of people saying they thought that's what this movie was about. I'm like, where did you get that from? I guess I it, know. And what line of dialogue implies that, like, we don't even know about the game in this. They don't even talk I mean, about the, that. The movie is called Endgame. To be game. fair, but yeah. like, uh, no, no, and no. like, I guess in in the context of the movie, Mythos is still out there somewhere, I guess. But Faith yeah. is assumed to have died, be dead. Right. So I don't know. I I still don't think there's much reason for people to think that. And yeah. certainly the producers didn't think that because they made another movie that wasn't the end. So like, I mean, yeah. I guess that's the Highlander thing the whole time, but like. Yeah, it is the Highlander thing the whole time. <laughs> thing the whole time. Sorry, guys. All right. All right. All right. Also, I can't get over like the director. They say the director's terrible. The acting is sometimes clumpy, but it's like, but still five out of five. Like it's, yeah. per it's perfect. Like. I don't even... understand. Why, why, what's confusing about that? All right. Okay, next one. Um, clumsy, clumsy directing. <laughs> clumsy directing, yeah. All right, this Hercules, one. Hercules. This is from February 27th, 2001. Five out of five stars. Um, as a film fan, I will confess that Highlander is a brilliant piece of work. Work and hence, exactly. I'm a fan of it. Yeah. <laughs> I love this chicken or the egg scenario. It's a brilliant mm. piece of work. And hence, I'm a fan of it as a film fan. Therefore, I found Highlander Endgame enjoyable though I feel that some of the character development was a little underdone. A few of the villainous henchmen I would have liked to have uh, seen more work, on, uh, work done on. I would have also uh, have liked to have seen more development between the two McClouds. In the franchise, it is explained that Connor, about 100 years older than Duncan, trained him in the ways of the immortals. From this mentor-student relationship, a deep friendship formed that made the two like brothers. As a fan, I knew this. So a scene towards the end of the film, which I won't give away for those uh, who haven't seen it, reaches its peak as, a ver as very touching and significant. 
Someone unfamiliar with the series might find it a tad confusing. Fans will also find uh, welcoming some familiar faces from both the first film and the TV show, but I won't give away any of their cameos either. Uh oh. Uh -oh. Uh, despite very secretive. <laughs> yes. Despite these shortcomings, however, the film itself is quite good. The well choreographed action scenes al alone are worth the price of the DVD. And both Lambert and Paul deliver performances that are so powerful, so sincere and moving that even a non-fan will be touched by their delivery. <laughs> Truly, wow. these are two of the finest performances of the year. I use, uh, the use of scenery is also Oscar worthy with good <laughs> Scottish Irish tunes to back them up. Irish tunes, summing it all up, this is the perfect ending to a nearly 13 year franchise and all Highlander fans should drop what they're doing and flock to go buy it. I applaud the writers and the director for their effort here. But most of all, I applaud Christopher Lambert and Adrian Paul for their masterful performances. Wow. Having been tackling their roles for years, they've got the part nailed. And their presentations here pay the ultimate tribute to a fantasy franchise that has reached epic proportions. Proportions. In the end, there can be only one, and this is the right one. This film is the right one. There we go. Yikes. I, I, I will note that in the year 2000, in order for one of these gentlemen to win an Academy Award for, for Best Actor, they would have to be Kevin Spacey in American Beauty. <laughs> Or Denzel Washington in The Hurricane. Oh my God. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I definitely give the Oscar to one of these guys over Denzel fucking Washington. Yep. Yeah. Uh, one of the greatest actors. If, if one of them was considered a supporting actor, they'd have to be Michael Caine in Cider House Rules, Tom <laughs> Cruise in Magnolia. Oh, which wow. Is one of my favorite performances of all time. It's amazing. Uh, or Michael Clark Duncan in the Green Mile, or Jude Law in the Talented Mr. Ripley. Yikes! Wow. This is like a fairly that's like a fairly stacked category. Yeah, yeah, and these guys blow them out of those losers out of the water. That's true. <laughs> You're not uh, wrong. It's a brilliant piece of work. Hence, I'm a fan of it. Hence, I'm <laughs> a fan. <laughs> but All right, we should acknowledge that people do love these movies. Yeah. Uh, we are having some fun with some people who are a little over the top in section for him, but uh, <laughs> yeah, it's a thing that people love. It's a thing. Right. Yeah. It's a thing. As good as always. <laughs> <laughs> the names of these. Highlander, the Highlander quote series are an extremely creative saga. <laughs> but I hope it never dies. I am a female, and even though all the fighting scenes, there is enough ro even and even though with all the fighting scenes, there is enough romance and fantasy for the ladies to ponder and wish for in real life. Oh, I really enjoy the past slash present switches throughout the movie. We know which one this this review is talking about clearly. Oh yeah, uh, and they keep you tuned in to the whole picture and the whole centuries long storyline. This movie is not for the analytical mind, nor for the right brainers out there. Your left Ooh. brain needs to be turned on to reach for the fantasy of these movies and series. Wow. Uh, this is a very horny review, right? <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> not I hope for the right brainers. As much as I do, the movie is very, very entertaining, and I hope to see more films in the future. Sure. I hope to see more <laughs> films in the future, like in general? Yep. No, Highlander films, yo. Oh. Oh, uh, well. <laughs> well, we um, get one. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I have a problem with this. Like, not for the right brainers out there. Like, what? Like, I, I, are there fantasy movies you like, guys? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have to be like overly analytical to enjoy them? Like, they're just cohesive stories, right? Yeah. <laughs> and that's why we enjoy them, right? And they have like fleshed out three dimensional characters that are like, you know, maybe relatable. Not Maybe. for the right brainers, Keith. Yeah, not no. We we can all demand uh, you know, quality out of our entertainment, I think, but that's me. No, that's not a laugh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right, Eamon. All right. This is, this so this is from IMDB, the mm -hmm. Internet Movie Database. And this is different. We're up in the game here. We're going from five stars to ten stars. That's right. A lot the of stars. Are twice as high. Yep. Yeah. So this is a 10 out of 10 review. Very underrated, brilliant performance. Warning. Spoilers. 
And this is from Garrett KVDH27 <laughs> in October of 2005. Yep. Fantastic end to the game played by Jacob Kell and Connor and Duncan McLeod. Don't think it's an end to the game, but let's see where this goes. Yeah. The fierce hatred between two past friends, friends, F-R-E-N-T-S, Connor and Jacob, reaches an epic climax in which Connor and Duncan must become one to defeat Jacob. Lisa B. also had her part, but wasn't that impressive at all. (laughs) Okay. Okay. Actually, I highlight the performance of a beautiful woman, but the fact that she was another one of the cast. What? A beautiful woman, it says. Not a beautiful woman. <laughs> this is, it's, this is, all right, go on, Evan, sorry. She looked pretty, but that was all. Jacob Kell betrayed his best friend, Connor McLeod. Were they what? best friends? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> and then I guess they when, were friends. And then when Connor tried to save his mother, helped. What? The people who were trying to burn her. <laughs> Whoa. All right. Yeah. Connor then killed both Jacob as his priest father <laughs> and infuriated Jacob swore revenge. Connor knew that he was immortal. <laughs> okay. But also that a simple chop of his head would take that away. <laughs> his great brother Duncan fought in the Great War. Okay. <laughs> then Connor. Sad. Then Connor picked him up and explained to him about his immortality. The two brothers lay in collecting immortal kills and were both about 360 something of confirmed <laughs> immortal kills. What? But Connor also knew that Jacob Kell was getting stronger and stronger with a total over the 620 confirmed immortal kills. Kell's ultimate goal was to get revenge on Connor by killing everyone who meant something to Connor. <laughs> And then to complete his revenge by killing Connor as they would be only ones left to make humiliation even worse. In the end, he would be stopped by the brotherhood double of Duncan and Connor, who became one. Overall, the Scottish passion was great. And the mix in styles when people fought showed great strength in depth. That's why it is a mystery to me why this movie is so (laughs) harshly underrated. What? It was a great movie and truly end game. My score 10. <laughs> wow. I, I, I think this gentleman might be German or something. Yeah. That might account for some of like the weird phrasing here. But I like that he just summarizes the movie and is like, that's why it's a 10. <laughs> right? Yeah. It's the, like the this plot... happened 10 out of 10. Yeah. The plot of this movie makes it a 10. Yep. Yikes amazing i, I like, like the phrase double brotherhood double of <laughs> that. that's a good, yeah. good turn of phrase <laughs> brotherhood double wow all right next um can a sequel be better than the original this is from what? august 2001 um people who bash this movie have <laughs> probably not even seen it or don't remember the first one well Ooh, wow. nice. yeah right yeah. highlander part two was a joke Part three was a bit of a redemption, but this one has it all. It's the perfect combination of the series and the first movie with a really well-written (laughs) storyline, some great memories from part one and a killer climax. The characters have been throughout. What? Thoroughly Thoroughly work it out. Thoroughly worked out. Oh, okay. (laughs) Whatever. The Highlander concept has not been compromised at all. And to put the icing on the cake, they found a really good looking woman that, oh, nope. Uh, I would recommend this movie to anyone who's into the whole Highlander thing, (laughs) but also to anyone who's just into good action movies. Um, Yikes. Uh, I also don't understand this. Like the Highlander concept has not been compromised at all. The premise of this movie is like you fight on Holy Grant, like oh, you can double up fighting people. You can have a brother double, double brother fight up. Brother. Like this is crazy. Have the, they the, seen the first movie? Jeez. The concept has been very thoroughly uh, <laughs> fucked up. Yep. That's so funny. Uh, all right, two all more. Right. All right, we're 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 coming through to the end of these second opinions. Uh, there can be only one movie that is warning <laughs> major plot spoilers you have been warned 
I assume that's it's, how they wanted this bread. Yeah. Yes. Spoliers. <laughs> it's French. Spoliers. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> a fan of the movie series, I enjoyed this movie thoroughly. I would de- definitely <laughs> recommend seeing the movies that lead up to this movie first. Skip the second one, though. <laughs> what? So just see one other movie. Yeah. yeah. Christopher Lambert has been the Highlander since forever, and he can act. <laughs> I enjoyed his performance in all the Highlander movies and was crestfallen when the battle between him and Adrian ended in his death. Aww. Adrian Paul is the new face, and I honestly hope will be around for quite a while. His acting and fighting skills are extraordinary and really make the movie worth watching. The quote, evil guy can be summed up in a few words. One of the best villains ever. <laughs> the plot was slightly confusing at times. You <laughs> sort of watch it with a Highlander fan from both the movie and the TV shows. Also be sure to check out the DVD because it explains some of the confusing plot conflicts. <laughs> I enjoyed this movie a lot and would recommend it. What? Wow. Are you crazy? So this is a 10 out of 10 review and you have to watch it with a fan of the movies right. and a fan of the TV show. Yeah. You, Who you need two friends in order yeah. to enjoy this movie. Which also, we have two friends. Look. That's true. We figured it out. Yeah. We're doing great. We met we met this person's requirements and we saw all the other ones, but we didn't skip the second one. So That's true. Maybe that was our problem. Maybe if we had skipped the second one We'd feel different. We would love to see you. Even Mm -hmm. more than we do already. (laughs) Okay. All right. All right, Damon, the last one. This is it. The last one. This is 10 out of 10. It's a success. (laughs) This was written in July of 2001. This is without a doubt success for the action adventure genre. It brings good entertainment, lots of superb fighting scenes, and also a good story. Why it didn't do better with the audiences is a mystery indeed. I dare you to say this movie doesn't stand back for successes like what? Stand back for successes like Mummy Returns and Tomb Raider. Sure, both are quite entertaining, but the point is lost somewhere halfway through. Endgame keeps its point and the real value all the way. What? This is a film about heroes. Heroes that change the course of the world. What? In the end, I must say Lambert and Paul did a great job. I look forward to see more of Adrian Paul as Duncan. Well, you get your wish. <laughs> That's right. One more go That's around. True. Wow. What? Movies like The Mummy Returns like lose their steam halfway through, but this movie keeps it going? Yeah. Yeah, I don't get it. It's also funny because this one aped its its final scene from The Mummy Returns. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's right. It's an interesting Scorpion, choice Scorpion King, example. though. Scorpion but, King, baby. Isn't he true. in the Mummy Returns? Sure. The Rock and a, on a big monster scorpion body. Oh, that's right. That that animation looks great. Speaking of early 2000s, like computer-generated uh, special mm-hmm. effects. Yeah, those are good. Tomb Raider. I've <laughs> never seen the tomb, any of the Tomb Raider films. I believe there are three of them, right? There are. There's two from the uh, the original cast, and then there's a reboot. With Academy Award winning actress Alicia Vikander. Yeah. I don't think that movie did too well. I did not see that movie. I did not either. It mm. didn't look that good. Mm. Well, there we go. I remember the internet complained that her breasts weren't big enough. Uh... Big enough for what? I, I, I don't know. They're, bon- they're boners? I don't know. Like, grow up. All right, grow up. This is also, like isn't a. Is she an undead mummy? Is Undead that mummy. is that canon? Is that it? Is that Tomb what Raider is? Yeah. yeah. Oh, Tomb Raider. Sorry. Yeah. Oh, not the Mummy. Oh, okay. Sorry, I thought we were back in Mummy Land, but even Tomb- worse. Oh, they Tomb- rebooted that too, right? They yes. did. Tom Cruise, baby. That's right, Tom Cruise. Magnolia. He wasn't the Mummy though. He was just a man. Just a man. Just mm-hmm. a man. <laughs> All right. Well, that was fun to re- uh, to read some of those. I guess. Uh, I guess I do apologize for people out here who do like this movie. But again, like I don't know. Like I don't like this movie, and I think we have pretty good criteria for not liking it. So, uh, and also I think we should all, you know, 
it's okay to have high expectations for like films. Like, I don't think we all have to, sorry, I'm like getting defensive clearly because I like am bugged by this, but like, I don't know. We all don't have to be like, just cause it's Highlander, I have to love it. I don't, whatever. It's Agreed. okay. I don't know. Hey, I'm a big Batman fan and I don't like every Batman movie. Let's talk about them. Rate them, Eamon. What's your, what's your favorite and least favorite Batman movie? I gotta know. I gotta know. Everyone wants to know. Oh boy. Uh, so full disclosure, I haven't seen Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice. Okay. Really? Oh, and uh, just out of curiosity, are we including like animated uh, stuff in this? Uh, or does it I need would... a theatrical release? There's like Ma Batman Mask of the Phantasm. That's like. I'll very say, good. I'll say if we are counting theatrical releases, my favorite is Batman Mask of the Phantasm. Mm. My least favorite is probably Batman Forever. Okay. Interesting. I've been meaning to rewatch those because you've mentioned that you like uh, Forever more than, or you like Batman and Robin more than Forever. Yes, I used to hate Batman and Robin the most, and when I saw it in the movie theater, I cried because I hated it so much. <laughs> and I was like too old to do that. I was like thirteen or something. Kyle, do you have a bat bat ranking? Move. You know what? The the movie that actually jumps out at me is like the most disappointing. Like I was too old to cry in the theater for it, but uh, I hate, 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 hate Dark Knight Rises. Yes. I, I detest that movie. <laughs> and, and despite the fact that I'm obsessed with the Bane voice, mm -hmm. like I, that actually legitimately brings me a lot of joy, but I hate that movie. <laughs> like That might be my second least favorite Batman movie. Uh, it's a mess. I really don't like it either. Yeah, See, but it's okay. We can like other Batman movies, and it's okay to not like a particular no. installment. No, <laughs> we're not allowed. Do you feel you... safe? Uh, What's your favorite, Kyle? Ooh, my favorite one is probably either Mask of the Phantasm or the OG Tim Burton one. Um, for very different reasons. The the best of Phantasm is the best Batman story. OG Tim yeah. Burton one is just like a weird visual feast that's bananas. <laughs> like that movie, the the first two movies in that uh, are so much more insane than I ever gave them credit for, but in a way that I'm like just in for the ride. They are legitimately insane movies. <laughs> yeah, I'm like they are not good Batman stories either. No, I don't. Yeah, think. right. But they are interesting movie making. Yeah, that I enjoy. In Batman 1989, a movie I also really like and could watch every day. Do you own uh, it on Blu-ray? I do. Good. Mm. The first, the first thing that happens to Batman is he watches two people get mugged and doesn't save them. Then and he then gets he, shot. Yeah, and he gets shot. <laughs> <laughs> Shot immediately after an American Express ad. Yeah, that's true. I'm like, cool, Batman. Good work. Yeah, wild. Keith, wow. what about you? Oh wow. Um, you know, I I gotta say, I love Batman Begins. Like, uh, yeah, I think it's like it's great. Part of me does like it more than The Dark Knight. Uh, I think it's like a tighter story. Like, I have some problems with The Dark Knight. Like, fourth act or how many, however long that movie goes on for. Uh. Uh, but yeah, Batman Begins is really tight. Uh, it's got like training montages that I love that are very Highlandery. Uh, least favorite Batman movie. Ooh, uh, I mean, it might be The Dark Knight Rises. Uh, mm -hmm. really? Although, yeah, hold on, we are counting. I, I thought guess, I was having a Batman v Superman, all that sort of stuff. I mean, Batman v Superman counts. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, those those are like I, I, are they my least favorite of the Batman movies? Like I just am like they don't even feel like Batman movies to me. I don't like them, but uh, yeah. whatever. I don't know. So I'll say uh, Dark Knight Rises. Wow, well, all right. Mask of the Phantasm is very high on the list, though. But I love that movie. Highlander. Highlander. Sorry, guys. Highlander of the Phantasm. All right. Well, that was a fun distraction. Um, let's play a game. Ooh. Ooh. Okay, Kyle and Eamon, we are going to play a game. Uh, so we kicked off this episode with a bit of uh, a small game uh, about the budget of Highlander. Uh, so I thought it would be fun to play a game where we talked about uh, how much money these films made. Uh, so to kick us off, how much money do you think Highlander made? Highlander Endgame. 
Didn't, didn't you show us that as part of the first thing, as part of its worldwide growth? Uh, yeah, I did, and I forgot about that. So we already know that it made <laughs> $12.8 million. Okay. Uh, that's our baseline, $12.8 million. Uh, so the way this game is going to work, and also this is going to be a, a pretty uh, easygoing game. So I don't want to hear any gripes about rules, rules I might make up as we go along. I don't care. Uh, but... We're going to go, I'm going to uh, show you guys some pictures of movies that came out in the year 2000. And your first thing is just shout out uh, what the name of the movie is. And you get a point for that. So whoever guesses first on what the movie is, uh, just from a picture of the, the, the fucking movie, uh, you get a point. And then you both get to guess if you think that movie made more money or less money than Heimlich. Ooh. So there's no like, it's not like a speed round or you're not stealing points. You both can just guess more or less. Uh, and then I will reveal the answer. Sound good? Love Sounds it. Sounds good. All right. So, so this is all domestically. Okay. So round one. And remember, shout out uh, as quick as you can what movie uh, the picture oh, is from. So wait, this is domestic? Because yes. the other one was worldwide gross. So. Well, uh, I think I maybe, oh, you know what? I might have adjusted for domestic. Whatever. It's it's fine. Who cares? Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. Amy gets a point. More. Right. Eamon thinks this made more money than Endgame. I, Kyle. I also think this made more money. Okay. The, the best picture nominated film. It is. Ang Lee. This movie made 12.2, so less money Damn. than Endgame. Nobody That's gets crazy. a point. Isn't that crazy? What a good movie. With it's a swords. brilliant movie. Yeah. Uh, if people like uh, movies with swords and sword fighting uh, that has like a comprehensible plot and like <laughs> scenery that's not like CGI'd, hey, check this movie out. All right. Next, remember to shout out the name as soon as you uh, think of it. I, I, I actually bet that that movie made more, but. Oh, you did? Uh, what? Wait, Eamon, you oh, guessed this, more, right? This is dude. I think we both did. Oh, okay. Yeah. Ooh, I think Kyle got it. it. What'd you say? Dude, where's my car? That's correct. Oh. All right. Did this movie make more or less? More. More. Eamon? Uh, I will also say more. Uh uh. Oh. Yes, more. Eamon. 33 wow. million. So you both get a point. Look at these two assholes. <laughs> <laughs> I saw movie. that movie in the theater, guys. What? I know. So Why? I, 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 I don't know. You go to a movie and it wasn't, it was, I remember. Did you like it? No, I hated it. And when <laughs> I left, the people I was with were like quoting the movie and I was like, I want to die. I hate this so much. Anyway, here we go. Next. The Grinch. All right, Eamon. I mean, these are very easy to get that first point. All right. Yeah. More or less money? More. Yeah, I say more too. All right. You like, two would be. More. Correct. How the Grinch Ooh. Stole Christmas oh. is the number one uh, film of the year 2000. How about that? Yeah. So it made 20 times more than this movie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that crazy? All right. Moving on. Next round. Oh. Professor Two. There's more to that title, baby. The Clumps. <laughs> yeah. Right. All right. Kyle gets a point. That's we weird. That we talked about the Clumps in this episode. I know. Isn't it weird? That's such a photoshopped image. I mean, it has to be, obviously, because Eddie Murphy can't sit next to himself. But sure. <laughs> uh, Wonderful. It's definitely made more. Yeah, it had to have, right? Hercules, Hercules. <laughs> oh, of course it made more, yes. Mm, All right, it is now tied up. You guys are uh, going strong, five to five. This was for all the marbles. That grand grandmom clump. <laughs> sure. This is being John Malkovich. Mm -hmm. Oh, very good. This is tough. I'm going to say less. I'm going to say more. Oh, less and more. This this could tie it up, but. Oh, less. Holy, Ooh. how did this movie make so little money? This is such a good movie. Okay, now there may be a flaw. I I, I realized this morning. <laughs> Kyle's like, you fucked up the game. I I know. Can I guess? Can I guess the flaw? Yes number of screens these movies are released on no i do have that uh, list i uh, i think the flaw might have been and i didn't realize it until this morning when i was looking at like the full list of movies that this movie might have come out the year prior and was mm. popular and stuck around and in the year 2000 only made this much money 
Ooh. So like Orr came out in 99 and was only in like showing for like a month or two in the year 2000. So I screwed up the game as usual. I'm seeing Gross USA is 22 million. Gross USA. Well, well, whoops. Whoops, I messed up the game. Moving on. <laughs> Eamon knows this one. Ooh, good start. The way the Simbra. That's right. All right, more or less. 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 Kyle? I actually have no idea what this movie is, so I'm going to follow Eamon's lead. Well, another movie with swords, that is good. And this made less in the year 2000. Yes. Ghost Dog is one of my favorite movies. Everyone should watch it right now. There you go. Or else. So we featured two movies with swords that are very good. Uh, it's uh, Ghost Dog, The Way of the Samurai. Little Nicky. <laughs> yes, Little Nicky. My or brother, less. my brother Cassius hit me in the head. With a this shot. definitely made more. Yeah. <laughs> yeah but then say, is it made more? All right, this movie made $38 million. So this did pretty wow. well, I guess, right? My brother can't oh, oh, shit. <laughs> what is this? Battlefield Earth, Earth baby. That's yeah. right. All right. Well, more I or less. This made more, though. Uh, say it. Say it. Less. Uh, but more. Oh, more. <laughs> what a movie. Everybody <laughs> should also see this movie. Sure. It's horrible. This is what do we think? Brother, where art thou? That's right, Kyle. Oh, brother, where art thou? More this or less. Made more money. Amen. Yes, more, more, it's more, a George more. George Clooney film. What? So I messed up. I, I, there's no yeah, way this movie made a million dollars. <laughs> so I wrecked the game. Obviously, uh, I was doing this yesterday. It was it was a very long day. Uh, moving on. <laughs> this is gonna be a hard one to guess. Oh, uh, 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 Dr. They, T and the women. Yes, <laughs> Dr. T and the women. More or less money than Highlander Endgame. Um, uh, more. More? More. More money. Wow. Mo money. Mo money, mo money, mo money. Why do I know this movie? <laughs> I know it too, man, right? It's yeah. kind of weird. Uh, yeah, I have no clue what this movie is. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Uh, uh, oh, this is the Flintstones too. Colon. Rock Vegas. There's a little Close. bit more to it. Viva Rock Vegas. That's, <laughs> That's right. right. Is it really? Yep. Yes, it is. This, and is it true that none looks like a porn parody? <laughs> it does. <laughs> none of the original cast returned? No. That's Isn't a, that a bummer? That's a travesty. Also, Billy Baldwin or whatever the fuck as Barney is horrible. <laughs> <laughs> I guess so. Huh? No Rick Moranis. All right, Awful. more or less. The more. I'm gonna say less. More. Uh, All right. Money. <laughs> I think there's only one or two more. Here we go, guys. Hey, care to guess how much money Oh Brother Where Art There made? Uh, probably a whole lot more than what I put down. Obviously, uh, it probably made like sixty million dollars or more than 72. that. Seventy-two. <laughs> wow. All right. Well, you know what. This is why I shouldn't be making the games on the show. And I should just make poorly done, like, bar graphs. <laughs> <laughs> it was still fun. Sure, it was fun. There was, there was images. There were. <laughs> uh, let's say Eamon wins. I'm looking oh. at the sure, let's say it. <laughs> I don't know. Sure. It seems like he won by maybe two to three points, Kyle. So good job, Eamon, for winning the broken game. Yeah. Thank you. End game. That's right. You've now won the game. Ooh, what's it say on the bottom of Kyle's game. mug? Just letting everybody Harry see. Potter. World of Harry Potter. You should put. We should put uh, secret messages on the bottom of our cups for, for Ooh, listeners. That's they a good say, idea. Help keep. Let's say like help me or call yeah. the police. Right. That's horrible to joke about. But. You uh, suck. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, that that brings us to the. Uh, I guess the end of this episode. Uh, I don't know. How do we want to like put all this in context here, guys? Like we've read some bad reviews. We've read some good reviews or we've given bad reviews. Uh, we've read some good reviews. Uh, I don't know. What's the, what's the, where does Highlander, uh, you know, land the legacy of Highlander or how do we rate these all at this point? We were rating Batman movies. Where's Highlander Endgame stack up right now. Oh, that's we got a good four idea. Highlander movies. And I guess if you want to include the show in there, what else? And we've watched Highlander the search for vengeance. So that's mm -hmm. like six properties, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I'm still prepared to say that Highlander: The Search for Vengeance is the second best Highlander movie. I'd agree with you. Uh, mm -hmm. 
And this, honestly, we haven't watched The Source yet, might be my least favorite. The Source Agreed. might be your least favorite, you're saying? No, Endgame might be. Oh, 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 I see. Of the ones we have, we have done so far. Um, obviously, how under, how under the film slash the series are like neck and neck for number one, clearly. Sure. But the, uh, yeah, I, I feel like if I'm just, in, if I was ever just inclined to watch something Highlander, this would be the last thing I would turn to. Sure. All right. Like, I'd rather watch Mario Van Peebles' weird antics or the insanity that is Highlander 2 then then kind of trudge through this again. Right. How about you, Eamon? How's where's yeah. this one fall? This is also my last, my last. I'd say Highlander 1, the series, Search for Vengeance, Highlander 2, Highlander 3, and then Highlander Endgame. I think I agree with that uh that assessment. Yeah, yeah I largely endorse that. Yeah. Huh. And I I, I rewatched all of these movies recently. Oh, cool and uh yeah it's just yeah what was that like tell, tell us about like what what it was like comparing like highlander 3 to this highlander 3 and this go around was a lot more boring than i remember it being oh interesting like it wasn't like bad or anything it was just like kind of like this is kind of like highlander 2 is still insane to watch right and there's like interesting stuff but it's still like really bad and incomprehensible but like <laughs> One is still like the best. Sure. Simply the best. Simply the best. Better, Better than, all, than the all the rest. That's right. Huh. What about you, Keith? Uh, I think I would agree with your assessment, Eamon, that uh, the, the, the original movie, Search for Vengeance, two, three, endgame uh, in order. Uh, yeah. yeah, I'm very curious about where the source falls into that this because like I feel like much like end game like it's like the, it's like this the whole cycle repeated right like this is mm. like the reboot right like now it's highlander with adrian paul what's the sequel gonna be like basically like highlander 2 a dystopian future like it's weird that it's uh going back to that so i'm, I'm curious to see how that shift uh changes my perceptions of it like i might like it more because it's just so crazy different uh i don't know we'll see it's been wild i don't know but uh no i don't know it's a uh, well, I mean, well people, gonna... people like this movie. And <laughs> I know we fine. keep saying that. Uh, yeah. It is fine. And so next week, we're going to be reading from you, the fans. Uh, so we've got a ton of reader mail. And we're going to be going through that. And people are going to bring up different points. And I don't know, we'll try to try our best to react to them and give our takes. And uh, but yeah, obviously, this this film uh, exists in a, I, I don't know, is it a weird place in fandom? Or is it a place that like, I think we brought and talked this, about this before. Like, what other fandoms are like on the wane, it would seem? And like, what's the reaction to other properties in like, the canon right like does everybody just like like it because there's more of it i don't know huh it's an interesting question either. yeah <laughs> like did, did people feel that way about like for instance like the star trek next generation movies which it, honestly for me it's been a minute since i've seen those but like i feel like the quality on those dipped a bit uh at the end uh in my recollection but like star trek was like on the wane in the end in the middle too <laughs> okay okay in the middle too uh but like Star Trek as like a franchise was like going through some changes, I think, in like the late 90s, early 2000s, like, you know, pre reboot, all that sort of stuff. Like and now we have all these Paramount Plus shows and whatever uh, or, or not Paramount Plus, CBS, baby. Uh, CBS All Access. Right. But I, I, I don't know. I wonder how people uh, the fans treat those those films in that fandom, I suppose. You know, they see their flaws and are like, ah, fuck it. Or are they like, you know what? Like, it's more Picard. So I'm on board. Right. And yeah. sure, I love Picard. Well, there was that new Picard series. Now he's got people, his own show. So people like that. I think so. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Anyway, <laughs> I'm looking welcome. forward to tackling some reader mail next week. Uh, it'll be fun. And uh, yeah, I uh, hope this hasn't bummed any, you know, pissed off too many people, our podcast on this, but I don't know. They'll live. They, they yeah. will live, hopefully. <laughs> hopefully. Like Highlander, they will live, right? That's on right. and on and on. <laughs> Uh, very good. Well, we've been your rewatchers. Thanks a lot uh, for listening. Uh, I'm Keith. This is Kyle. And this is Zayman. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.